Welcome back to another quick and dirty edit with me, Martin. Um, I hope you're keeping well on the lockdown and I think it goes without saying that I'm doing these as some sort of, I don't know, measure of um, entertainment for you. Maybe you'll learn something from it while we're doing. Um, I've picked an image for this one, which is probably a bit more common for most people people who are having a bit of a stab at landscape photography and that's the sunset or the sunrise they're not normally my thing um, I'm a bit of an odd creature that I always try wherever possible to do something a bit different whatever that opinion of different is it is, is only mine so it might be different to yours but um, they're not normally my thing but this photo was taken just on a walk um, so I wasn't actually out intending to take photos always carry a camera with me though but when I saw this particular sunset you can see um, if we zoom in a little bit the way that the rays are coming out in particular from just because of the way the cloud is assembled around the setting sun just made, made it a bit special and also you can see people if you really look uh, still bathing in the water and then the reflection of the sun here it just looked really quite interesting and the same Difficulty applies as ever, especially if you're not carrying filters and things with you, which I wasn't. This was actually taken, if I remember rightly, let's just go back and have a little look. Yeah, I'm an XE, little tiny Fujifilm XE1, which is a real, you know, carry around point, not quite a point and shoot camera. It is interchangeable lenses, but um, little kit lens on it. Um, it certainly wouldn't have been set up in any way for doing, you know, um, time taken thought through photography let's put it that way so a little bit about the background when i took it i did the usual thing which i often talk about i exposed for the highlights or exposed for the sky we didn't want to lose any detail there and of course the sacrifice we make is because of the lower dynamic range of camera sensors compared to our eyes the sacrifice we made was a darker foreground if it was a formal landscape photography session and i had filters not that i've often used them but i could use a hard grad a filter to do um, the sky and then I could have exposed the, the foreground a little bit more but uh, I didn't have it and modern cameras usually give us plenty of latitude uh, for lifting the shadows so you know we can we can do that um, and usually when I compose this I put the sun or the central feature which a sunset will be in the middle of the frame which is unusual that's because and the specific reason for that is because I've already kind of touched on because we have this um, uh, this spread of sun rays coming out of the sun bear in mind this is still the raw image so there's a bit more detail to bring out here because we had these rays and they come out very evenly from the center it made sense to to put the central uh, subject central point in the middle here uh, it is quite unusual to do that and um, I, I did that choice I made that choice rather um, intentionally because I thought it worked in this particular case all right so the first thing I do, as ever, is I crop to um, so that I'm working with the image that I um, I want to end up with, and I think this does lend itself to um, an, a four by five or an eight by ten, whichever way you call it. So let's find that format first, and then using the the division in the grid here, and also looking into the image itself, let's decide where that should go. Now we could go with a good old fashioned rule of thirds, bang on, which actually quite well. So I'm going to put. The natural horizon with the sea bang onto this top third line and then take a look at that it looks all right um i don't mind losing the top of this cloud because i think this area which we're losing above it is wasted space anyway as with the area down below here as well there's not really any detail there and what it really does quite nicely um almost naturally is you see this little lump of sand here with a nice little uh, highlight on the side of it it sits very neatly and nicely into this area here the same with this tuft here and I like how this leading line comes through here and it does occupy all three that works out really well compositionally think about this guys when you're making your images and if so later when cropping them too that these kind of subtle things you'll know it when you see it but they aren't always natural to the eye but when you start building them in it makes a lot more sense and um, what I should have done actually which I forgot to do because I was too eager to click that was just check out all oh, my horizon was pretty damn near on so I don't really need to tweak that at all and there we have it so that's where we would start here's my my final crop 
before I start making the edit. Now the obvious first thing to do in the edit here is to bring up the foreground, lift the shadows there, have a little look into it, see if there's um, much issue with noise, and then decide what we're going to go from do with it from there. But the main thing I already know that I'm going to do with this is you can see we got this natural highlight catch which wanders through this this June part here, the lower June part here. That's natural light coming from the sun. Because of the way we've had to expose here, it's not popping like it did to the naked eye, if you can imagine. And I always say this, this dark area was a lot brighter to the naked eye. And so we're not cheating. What we're doing is we're balancing the exposure to what it really was like. That's the next step. And these particular areas of highlight here and here were much brighter. But the camera, of course, can't really catch that, especially if it's concentrating in a way because we've made it uh, expose this quite correctly up here. So let's do that first. So we'll just go to the, um, the general lifting of the shadows. Now, we can do that up here in the main panel. I don't mind doing that in this case and not just concentrating on that lower area by masking it or anything because this area up here is so bright anyway, it's not going to be really affected too much by me lifting shadows elsewhere. So let's just push the shadows to start with and it starts to come up. It's got a bit of a green hue to it and that's a little bit to do with it being underexposed and then pushing pushing the shadows. So I'm going to push that not quite all the way to 90, but then I'm going to lift the general exposure because we've got some room to lift the general exposure without, you know, messing up the, the highlights at the top. And we can all, always bring them down as well. So let's come up a little higher to about there. All right. Not quite as good on the highlight area that I've talked about down through here yet, but we can paint that in in a minute and bring that to how it really looked. All right. So we brought that up and now we're looking a little bit better, but I'm still a bit concerned about how dark some of these areas are here. And let's just pop in and have a little look for noise. I think I need to go in deeper than that. Hold on. Oh, I've gone the wrong way. Creature of habit. So I'll give that a couple of seconds to render. Yeah, the noise, because it's not a high-end camera at all. The noise is going to be a little bit harder than we would normally uh expect from some of the higher end cameras that I might normally use quite a little bit of color noise in here and in within here but it's not too bad because it's a Fujifilm sensor we get this mushy wormy texture and where are the where we're not quite in focus because of course what we did was we you know the focus point is about here so we start to lose a little bit as we go out sorry so yeah it's a bit got the people there it's not too bad um, I'd still be prepared to exhibit this if, it, if I wanted to. Um, here's a shot that I have printed um, and, and finished in the past. But yeah, the noise is yucky. So the, one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a little look, see if I can deal with some of that noise. And I'm going to come down here. I'm just going to push the noise actually quite hard. We saw that really quite quickly soften the image. If I just show you the difference come back off that you see you're losing how that's blurring if I go really far you'll see it's terrible but I do need to give it quite a bit because the noise is pretty nasty push the detail out so I can recover some of that contrast within the noise a touch but the big thing here is color noise let me see if you're not familiar what color noise is it's when you get specks of color within the noise rather than just a look of grain so I think we've dealt with that pretty well. Bear in mind, we've not applied any sharpening at the moment, or the little bit of the import sharpening that was there, I've already got rid of. So that's a bit better. Yeah. It's not great, but it's getting there. And I don't really want to lift the shadows in these really dark areas too much anyway, because when I start painting in and bringing the highlight out down through here, um, it's then going to provide a good contrast to help me with that. All right. We've got a little bit of flare there. I don't know if you can spot it. I think that's flare, or it could just be a lighter patch. No, the way that it's shaped, I think it's just a lighter patch of grass because the flare would not be that be shaped. It would be it'd be circular or oval, really. So no, maybe that's not flare, although it does look like. Anyway, we're going to leave it. It's there. So I'm going to push my exposure up a tiny bit more, and I'm going to compensate by darkening the sky in a bit. There. Okay. And I'm also going to now, at this point, try and remove this green tinge down the bottom. Um, let me just remind myself if 
yeah I might do this with a grad let's do this with a grad so in the grad filter which I've clicked here in Lightroom little tip if you don't know it if you hold down shift as you apply the filter it will stop it so if I don't hold shift it all goes wobbly and all over the place right and sometimes it gets a bit skewy so come to the bottom hold shift and it will hold it straight for you you see that I'm gonna come quite far up and then I'm going to grab this upper line and draw that down take shift off now squish this down because I don't want that grade grad to be quite so strong there okay and what we do is just take the green towards the can you see that going if I go really bad just to exaggerate it I'm gonna come away from that and get rid of that green look that's better see you see that guys look at the bottom in particular it was green and now it's more natural but it's not quite enough be careful though. I don't want to start going magenta than the bottom on sorry off on see the difference it's a bit of a I won't call it a skill per se but it is a little bit of something um, people will learn to do spotting hues and color tinges and tints and things like that actually is something I found I learned um, learn to look for it and once you've seen it a few times you quite quickly notice it again um, whereas a lot of people don't um, and I guess it's just a yeah maybe it's a um, experience thing um, but that was definitely now I can point it out to you in the green close that happy with that and now to do this this highlight punch okay um, I would do a lot more to this image but I'm gonna do um, quick and dirty as ever so I'm gonna go to um, Dodge which is lighten smallish brush very little to start with up here you see and then just paint in so it looks a bit more natural as it did you see it's starting to lighten paint in where the highlights really were obviously they won't be down in this area because that's shadowed by blocked by this but you can see where the Sun was hitting and down the side of this too and all I'm doing here is just bringing this out as it really was in fact I haven't got enough on at the minute so I'm going to pump this up in a second just painting it in now let's bring it out not too much because that looks a bit dodgy and also it was warmer than that so I'm putting a little bit of warmth into it now can you see where things are going let me just turn that on and off yeah it's, it really is picking up what happened it did actually there's a little tiny bit up here too and a strip of it across there okay the magic will happen in a minute when I make everything pop but that's it to start with now I'm gonna lift the exposure a little bit more and this is when it starts to pop now can you see how that's working yeah now it's looking like it really looked and as you look at it you can tell the lower half of the photo I'm talking about it looks natural to your eye yeah if we remember what it looked like before and my computer's got a lag on it hold on I'm just trying to bring you up a comparison see the difference no it's not being different it's it's being a pain sorry computers being a pain you only cost an absolute fortune right now I can bring the sky back down to how it should be because I've now finished doing that so let's use another grad hold it at the top hold shift pull it down so it stays straight and then adjust the grad to taste as in the positioning of it so I've put technically I've put a hard grad in here graduated grad graduate field now I'm going to bring that down to balance it with the image yeah in fact I'm going to drag that down a bit further there and the last thing I'm going to do and I'm doing this really damn quick I should be shot for my sloppiness but I think you get the idea here so I'm going to pick a brush now and I'm going to put some um, clarity into the sky remember I showed you this maybe you might remember in a previous one 
So clarity, a bit of noise reduction because we're going to be introducing noise as we play, as we edit. We already would have done. Um, so we'll deal with it as we go because I'm putting this in because it will slightly, you see how it just slightly brought out those sunbeams underneath the sun and put some contrast into the sky to really make things pop. Bear in mind we haven't popped the colours yet. We haven't touched the colours yet. And just paint that in. And again, if I turn that on and off, so looking at this area just under the sun. You see that? Just, just subtle-ish, ish, but it does the job. Now let's close that down. I think we could actually give this a little bit of overall saturation to start with. So I'm just going to slowly climb this up. It's got to look natural, boys and girls. We could do this. Wow, and then put that on Facebook and it get a thousand likes. But it's not natural. Give it enough color to look real. That's about that. That's about it. That really is all that it really is. Let me just take that back to what it wasn't. All right, that's a raw image, flat with very little color in it. That's about as real as it will get and as natural as it will look. It doesn't need to go any further than that. If you want to push color a little bit more, let me just push the warmth a little bit, touch actually. Now it really does look like a natural warm sunset. You can pretty much feel that on your face, can't you? It doesn't look like we've gone over the top. We really don't need to. I know I bang on about that. And I know I'm an old grouch about that, but less is more. Right, um, what was I gonna do just before I went off on one there? Um, oh yeah, I was just gonna say what you can also do is you can push certain colors. So I've gone to the saturation, into HSL, just saturation, because I think the blues could go a bit har harder to be, you know, what it looked like. Again, using memory, maybe aqua. But I don't think I'll take anything else any higher. I could be, oh, it's a sunset. Let's go mental with the oranges. Again, that's for Facebook. <laughs> All right. And finally, let's just um, sharpen things up a little bit. Uh, I'll do it in here. I probably normally sharpen this one in Facebook, actually. Because, uh, sorry, Facebook, what am I talking about? In Photoshop, because it's a Fujifilm image and the sharpening in... Um, Lightroom, especially on the older sensors. This is an XE one. So this is like a what 2014 camera. Um, so with Fujifilm sensors, um, it's better to put less sharpening on. I think I mentioned this before, but more detail up. You see now, if we do it the other way around, we get a real bleh, look at the state of that. So let's just be subtle with it. That should be enough. If I just take that off, you can see. All right, that's about it. Detail can actually back off a touch. All right. And I think that looks pretty good. Um, I don't know why it's not showing the real before. It's not showing the raw image at all. My computer's been a real ass <laughs> here at the moment. But anyway, doesn't matter. Let's just hit F, the full image. Come on, computer, what's the matter with you today? That's it, quick and dirty. Less is more, remember everybody. The key is make it look like it really looked when you were there. Don't do anything else, okay? And then it looks natural, it's believable, and it will be appreciated. And that's the sort of landscape image which uh, we really do want to be producing, in my opinion. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that. Take care. I hope you're not all going stir crazy and climbing the walls with this lockdown. But take these little tips, grab a few photos. By the way, I should say, if any of you want raw images to play with, I'm more than happy to share some of them, okay? I'm not precious about my work in any particular way because at the end of the day, all this copyright nonsense and people doing these things, I'm thinking everybody's going to steal their images. It's very rare, and if somebody does steal it, they're not going to make much of a much of a buck out of it anyway, to be honest with you. And so it's only really a matter of principle, and I really don't give a damn. So... If you want to go off and pretend it's your image, you can do. I will warn you, though, if I spot that, I will point it out and embarrass you. But I don't mind <laughs> I don't mind you borrowing raw images if you want, okay? So if you want raw images, um, like this one um, was. Is that it? Yeah, so let's return that to as it was. Because I don't need to do it again. I've done it many times. Reset. 
So if you want a raw image like this, let me know and you can take this file. I'm happy to send it to you. It's a really old one anyway. And you can play with it and see if you can produce something like, where's the final image? I've lost it. It's not that one. It's too bright. Anyway, it's not that one. So give us a shout, guys. All right, so take care and, as I said, stay safe. Bye-bye.